Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and today I'm going to talk about what is one of the most controversial subjects in graphic design, the Mac versus PC argument. Now this is an argument that is a little weird for me to be doing a video on because if you've been following my videos, you know that I use Mac and PC. I don't really have a preference for one over the other. I enjoy them both, which makes me the odd man out in many cases as a designer because people have got this polarizing idea that you're either a Mac or a PC, when the reality is that you're either a designer or you're not. The tools that you use are almost completely irrelevant except for how they uh, apply to your specific career pathway, your daily workflow, your you know needs, frankly you use the tools that you have and that you need and that you prefer and that's the end of it those things have no connotation on your professional level as a designer that's the truth however the truth has very little bearing on the reality and the reality as you know as someone working or aspiring to work in a visually creative field is that perception is reality and as designers we're all about perception and we're all about manipulating perception to our advantage. In this industry, perception is reality. And there is a perception associated with the tools you use. You know from watching these videos that I advocate Adobe programs. And I, and I do that because for what I do, they're the best tool that I have available to use in the industry. And they are industry standard and they're respected. There is a perception that if you use Adobe tools that you are more professional and more talented than someone who uses another tool like Quark Express or Corel Draw. However, that is not strictly true. You can use that or you can use pen and paper and be a superior designer than someone who claims to be an Adobe Suite Master, Photoshop Master, whatever. You saw that I did a video on the fact that Photoshop is not graphic design and I addressed some of the um, unauthentic and unrealistic connotations in the industry that associate graphic design specifically with Photoshop. Photoshop's an amazing graphic design tool and something that I think every graphic designer at some point should learn to utilize just for their own benefit, but it's by no means an end-all be-all. The same is true in the Mac versus PC argument. There is a connotation and a stigma within the industry that if you're a designer, you use or favor or prefer Macs. If you're a professional designer, you use or favor and prefer Macs. If you're a successful designer, you use and favor and prefer Macs. I'm going to give you a brief history lesson on how all of that happened. Once upon a time, before Steve Jobs left Apple the first time, Apple was at the forefront of producing um, tools and applications and hardware for people who were different. Hence the phrase, think different. This was a tradition that still continued on some level even after he had left the company. This is why we have products such as uh, Final Cut Pro, GarageBand, um, Logic, Aperture, etc. These are applications that were developed specifically around the idea that creative individuals, people who worked within the creative services industry, people who worked within uh, media industries, people who wanted to make music, make videos, make images, were more creative, they thought differently, they had different needs, they valued aesthetics, and thus they were Mac people. And at that point in time, this was true. However, that was mostly true of a decade ago. Enter the early 2000s. In the early 2000s, with the invention of multi-core processors and hyper-threading, PCs were performance-wise competitive with Macs, and with regard to Apple's policies with customization of some of their products, um, etc., PCs were more accessible and cheaper with regard to individual component upgrades, which is ironic because when Apple started in the garage, the whole idea was to be able to choose and build a computer as you see fit. That's how Steve and, uh, Wozniak and Steve Jobs really got started, and that was the running philosophy of Apple during the era that was built on the hacker ethos. That's very different than the Apple we know today, where you get an Apple product and you're not really encouraged to upgrade it yourself. You're encouraged to utilize the Apple Store and Apple Genius, 
Um, in some cases, you can't even remove some of the parts. This isn't a bash on Apple because again, you guys have seen my videos. You know I use an iMac. You know that I'm going to buy the new iPad Air. I used Macs throughout all of college. I used them when I used to work at the ad agency. I, you know, have used Macs for a very, very long time. And I also know the history of Apple and the history of Macs and why things in our industry are the way they are. So just kind of bear with me as I walk through this. The idea that Macs were better suited for designers has some legitimacy in what they were back in the 32-bit era and prior to the early 2000s, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that was true. However, in the early 2000s and the later 2000s, in the era of 64-bit applications, processors that handle them, the move from Apple processors to Intel-based processors inside of Macs and Mac utilizing the same components and hardware vendors um, as PCs, the differences between the two in terms of their internal parts and guts disappeared almost completely. This happened around roughly 2004, I want to say. So for the last decade or so, in terms of the internal guts of the machine, in terms of um, processing power, et cetera, there's been no real discernible difference between Macs and PCs in terms of their ability to produce a result. That is a fact. Further evidence of this fact can be found on Adobe's website by you doing a Google search for Adobe Hardware Performance White Paper. In this extensive document, Adobe highlights and points out that it developed its applications as any good programming team would to actually be the same regardless of what platform you're using. It all comes down to your hardware specs at that point. And as I've already pointed out, a lot of the Apple hardware is provided by the same vendors as PC hardware. The individual components, you know, are the same. And if you build your own computer from scratch, then you can pick components that'll be superior to anything you buy on the shelf, whether it's an Apple or a PC. So it really doesn't even matter at that point if you're building your own hardware out. You can build at a lower cost something better than anything you can buy at a higher premium. That is also just a fact. The exception to this is probably the new Mac Pro. And I'll do a completely separate video on my thoughts on that because it's an engineering marvel when you really think about it. But again, not really relevant to a graphic design conversation because in truth, it's really more of a video editing machine for 4K video than anything else. Again, I'll just do another video on this. Macs versus PCs. So Apple, knowing for a fact that it has an educated um, consumer base, had to differentiate itself somehow. And it did this by touting its clean user experience and also highlighting the type of individual that is more likely to utilize a Mac versus a PC based on the task associated with them. And you guys will remember this as the Mac versus PC ads of the um, early 2000s. Now, this is interesting because in reality, people who work within the creative services industry as designers, video producers, audio editors, a lot of them do utilize PCs and they do them just fine. And um, there are a lot of cross applications that people use on both Mac and PC, such as the Adobe products and Avid and Reason. So again, it really doesn't matter what hardware platform you're using as long as the hardware specs are capable, it's just a matter of preference. And with that in mind, Apple focused on user experience. Instead of just uh, an aesthetically beautiful machine, which again, hardware nerds may not care about how their stuff looks, and if it runs, that's great, but they will care about user experience. They'll care about clean interfaces, things being easier to navigate, etc. Windows, um, in various incarnations, has been plagued with user experience issues depending on um, what your personality is. So, you know, it's one of those you could take it or leave it. However, I will point out that if you know what you're doing, you can take a uh, Windows theme that is set up to have a Mac OS experience and interface, plug that in, and voila, your user experience is now exactly the same as it is on an Apple without the cost associated with it. So again, if you know what you're doing, you can recreate a user experience based on a UI and um, that kind of scheme very easily, or you can have somebody do it for you for five or 10 bucks happily, 
and you're done. If all you care about is the difference in the user experience of the macOS interface, that is a quick and simple fix. If you care about the aesthetic beauty of the physical hardware, well, that means that the value that you're placing on it isn't specific to um, you being a designer per se. It's just that as a person, you value the aesthetics of your hardware and you have that consideration. And that's fine, that's a valid choice. It just doesn't dictate whether or not you're a professional. It just says something about your individual personality. That's it. If there's no real difference anymore between the hardware performance, the specs, and the end results that you can produce with a Mac versus PC, and some of the only differences are preferences in software or software that's only available on a Mac, and if we're willing to agree that the primary software graphic designers use, um, such as Corel Draw and the Adobe products, is cross-platform, why is there the stigma of professional designers or designers in general should be using Macs? Art directors, creative directors, and advertising executives who have been in the business for the last 20 or 30 years are primarily the reason that this stigma exists, and that's not an accusation so much as an explanation. The reason is that these folks have been doing this for a long time. They've been doing this professionally for a long time. They've been under the gun to produce results in one of the most grueling, stressful industries that there is. So they have to make sure that when they make decisions on purchases, that they're going with something that they can trust. This is a concept in advertising referred to as credibility and brand recognition. People who started out in the advertising industry any more than 10 years ago probably had their best and first experience with uh, graphic design hardware on a Mac. Whether it was a desktop Mac or um, a MacBook, that was probably their first experience and it was great and they've been relying on it ever since. When you're in a position like that, you have to rely on things that you know are tested, tried, and true and have always delivered for you. So regardless of any evidence presented to you, you're usually going to stick with something that you know from personal experience has worked and you're going to recommend that to your protégés. And even if you don't, your protégés are going to see that you've always done something and you've had success. In emulating and modeling you, they're going to replicate that success for themselves by adopting your habits, behaviors, and mannerisms. They're going to become your apprentices and disciples, whether you intend for them to or not. And that means that if you're a great photographer and you've been shooting on Nikon, your uh, assistant is probably gonna to wanna to shoot on Nikon too. Uh, they're gonna probably want to do that for several reasons. They'll know that they can go to you for advice when they want to make a new purchase. They'll know that if they run into a problem that you're in a position to talk to them about it because you've been using this before, etc. So it's a valid consideration. Industry pros like Terry White and Scott Kelby primarily use Apple products as well. And so when people are learning to become graphic designers and they're reading books by these people, they tend to realize and look them up and realize, hey, these people are using Apples and they're using Macs. And you know what? I keep hearing that professional designers use Macs. Maybe I need to be using one too. Maybe the next time I get some money, I go ahead and I ditch PC. Well, again, this is the reasoning behind that. It has nothing to do with the actual legitimacy of a Mac being better or a Mac being um, the next step up in a professional graphic design workflow. It has to do with the fact that they're just higher profile individuals within the industry, whether they be ad executives, whether they be supervisors, art department heads, creative directors, um, you know, product evangelists, etc., that just happen to use that product and prefer it because of their own personal experience and their own personal reasons, or other things they do that are not even industry specific that just allow them to um, get more from the Mac ecosystem and the Mac environment. It could literally come down to the fact that some people who are graphic design professionals use Macs for no other reason than the fact that they were iPod users and they've already tied all of their applications and all of their music and all of their videos to that ecosystem so it just makes sense for them to invest into it. It's no different than me with Nikon. I've invested in Nikon Glass over the years so even though I like a lot of things in Canon cameras and there are things they do better, I continue to buy Nikon products because I've already invested in the Nikon ecosystem. So it only makes sense. So again, this has been a very long-winded conversation, but it's a very involved topic, and there is legitimately no real advantage to using Mac over PC outrightly. It comes down to your workflow. There are things that will be better for you 
depending on what your circumstances, your need, your investment in other hardware or software might have been, your own experience in terms of what applications you learned, and that will be what determines whether or not it's more appropriate for you to use a Mac-based computer or a PC Windows-based computer. Uh, there are legitimate reasons to do either or both, and they don't say anything about you as a professional. They just say things about how you work and what materials you use and equipment you have and what you've invested in and what your personal preferences are, whether they be on the technical side or whether they're on the aesthetic side, whether you like something that's packaged and ready to go or whether you like the freedom to customize, build, and upgrade. These are personal choices. They're not a reflective of one's capabilities outside of specific criteria. That being said, I continue to operate in both worlds. There are things that I prefer to do on a PC Windows-based machine, and there are things that I prefer to do on a Macintosh-based machine. And I think that that's okay. But I'd like to know what you think. If you have anything that you want to contribute to the conversation, uh, feel free to do that in the comments below or make your own video in response to this, um, even though they don't do auto-response videos anymore or what have you. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys understand um, some of the advantages and differences between Macs and PCs and that's really just all about you and what you think is best for your situation. Uh, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, watch my other videos, and I guess I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.